what's going on everybody i am mr jones this is another video for shenanigans with mr jones uh this video is gonna be something just a little bit different uh, i'm not gonna do essentially any cooking in this one this is essentially my one year uh update one year review on um, the gorilla grill slipper bag it's been a little longer than a year this is now 2020 um i bought this uh this, this silver bag back in um 2018 for my birthday in October and um, it's been about a year and four months since I've had it so this is just a little update update review and just a little chat about what's going on with the grill um, not a whole lot but anyways that being said let's go ahead and jump right on into this video so as I said guys this is essentially a uh, an update video just to talk about my experience with the silverback now before we get all right, so guys, as I said, this is essentially going to be just an update video um, with the silverback year, four months later. Um, so let's just talk about it real quick. Um, I still love this thing. This silverback is, I mean, I haven't had any pellet grills before this. And before I got this, I didn't know anything about pellet grills. I thought pellet grills were for inexperienced, don't know what you're doing, backyard barbecue dads that wanted to have some barbecue every now and again for the family, maybe some friends, and wanted something easy. Um, now that I've had obviously a little more time to mature with it, and you know, of course gained some more knowledge about pellet grills, um, not only are just backyard dads you know, out there with pellet grills, but you got guys on competition circuits using all kinds of different pellet grills um, in competitions and winning competitions. And you got, of course, these lots and lots of manufacturers now coming out with their own uh, type of uh, pellet grill I mean most recently is Weber with their smoke fire and all the issues that they're having and I'll tell you what just on a side note about that when I first saw it and saw the concept and saw the videos I was like extremely excited thinking that I was going to get rid of my silver back and uh, get a smoke fire but now that the hype has died down and um, of course I've, I'm still in love with my silver back I don't think I'll ever get rid of my silver back um, unless something absolutely hap um, something bad happens to it. Um, and so far, nothing bad has happened with it. I don't have any negative, really, thoughts, really. I mean, I have some uh, some experiences that I wish didn't happen that were kind of my fault, just a couple blowback or burn back um, situations where I had it cooking at a higher temp, and I tried to bring the temp down. I didn't give it time, adequate time to cool off. And, of course, I had a little bit of burn back going into the, the hopper there. Um, but those are, I don't want to say necessarily rookie mistakes, but those are mistakes that anybody can make with a pellet grill that has a a burn pot on the same level as the auger um that being said we're going to take a look at this inside the pellet grill um real quick as you guys can see here my smokestack cap did break off um not really sure how it happened but gorilla grills did send me a replacement so i have the new smokestack and the cap to replace it with um, i just haven't gotten around to it yet um on a side note it's freaking cold and um <laughs> So we're going to just, you know, take a look at this inside of this guy and see how she's faring. Um, I am going to do a little cleaning video. Not extensive video. You guys have seen me clean my grill grips before, so that's not something new we're going to talk about. Um, this is going to be a real simple, easy video. Like I said, we're just going to talk about the inside of it, the grill itself, and my experiences. Um, the drip pan, everything is holding up great. And we're going to touch on this a little later, but give you a quick overview. I did buy a, a tube smoker. We'll touch on that a little later. I'm going to show you all the inserts and all the inner parts as I clean it out because I'm actually doing a baking uh, a baking um, video and we're going to cook that tomorrow. So I'm just going to get everything ready now so that I can reduce my amount of time in the cold tomorrow. And uh, with that being right, said, sorry, here guys, we go. Backtrack on you. But before we jump inside, let's talk about the outside. As you can see, like I said, I already talked about the smokestack cap on the end here. We're going to get that um, work, uh, fixed. Um, just looking at the outside, it's looking a little dirty, looking a little not shiny. Um, I'm going to reach out to Mark Grilla Grills and ask him what he recommends as far as cleaning. Now, I probably won't do trying to clean the outside of this while it's, you know, na well, not native, but it's like 20 degrees out. I'm definitely not going to try to do that now. It's probably too cold to be trying to do that. But when it, when the weather breaks and it gets nice again, hopefully we get a nice day here. And when it breaks and we get maybe a 40 or 50 degree day or something like that. But when that time comes, we'll try to definitely get her shined up again, get her back looking good. But um, it's looking a little dirty, um, but it's still holding up good. Everything is still 
You know, nothing's loose, nothing's wobbly, nothing's shaky. Everything's still working the way it should. A year and a year and four months later, I'm um, looking over here at the hopper. Still no problems with the hopper. I still got pellets in there. No leaks, no cracks, nothing wobbly. Everything's still working the way it should. Um, I don't know if you can see down there. No, you can't. Looking down here, yeah, it's still got power. I got it plugged up. But, you, you know, know it's, it's not looking bad. Just looking like a grill that's been weathered. Um, I got a new grease bucket. I'm going to get rid of that, get a, a grease can holder so that the cover can fit over it easily. Looking at the back of the grill, really nothing. This grill is in great condition, you know. Maybe a little rust there, you know. Pellet chute door, you know. Nothing major at all looking at this thing a year and four months like i said so, guys looked at the outside not a whole lot going on there it still looks like a damn good barbecue pellet grill now that we saw the outside let's take a look on the inside like i said you guys have seen me clean my grill grates before you're going to see a before and after but i'm not going to show you how i do it um it's been a few cooks now so i'm going to actually take it in and and actually use some soap and water to clean it off instead of just turning on the grill and letting it get hot and scrubbing it down i'm gonna take it in and get it cleaned up um as i did say i did get a, a um a uh what do you call it a, tube, a little tube smoker deal just to get some extra smoke flavor um when i'm doing certain cooks looking at this grill crate i mean I'm, of course you're not going to see the whole thing but no signs of wear on this thing this thing is i forget the the level of you know stainless steel that was used but <laughs> this thing is heavy and it's showing no signs of Looking at this drip tray, looks like it's just been worn, obviously, but it's not warping. It's just been used. No problems there. All right, and now here's the main heat deflector. Now I have to do a little bit better cleaning and degreasing everything after two to three cooks. I've been kind of stretching that, maybe looking at it, maybe five or six cooks like i said it's been freak, freezing cold out and i've been lazy i think we've all been there before but um my last cook i was finishing off um, a couple pork butts and i uh, i had an issue but of course it was of course my fault this was not on the company um, i let the uh it's been a while since i cleaned out and it got so it got to be so much ash in there that um Pretty much my temperature died and the grill had an error message talking about low temperature and i didn't know what was going on so of course i'm going to show you exactly what happened so of course we got the heat shield and before we look down in the grill and show you my mistake this is the heat shield still looking good not i don't see any real warping maybe just a tiny bit yeah i do see a little bit of warping but not a lot like I said, I do do some long cooks, and then it does get pretty cold here. So that could be the cause of that. And voila. Looks like I got a like an ant problem or something. And this is exactly what it is. You got through so much ash in there. As that auger kept pushing and pushing more pellets in there, it essentially just filled it up. And um, that's on my, that's 100% my fault, not on the company. That's something that I did, and I need to do better with that. But, um. Yeah, like I guess I did a couple briskets, a couple pork butts, some ribs, and um, and some bacon the last time that I did it. And this is what happens. You do not clean out your ash at a good time every few cooks. You just get a, a, a ant pile, a, a, a pellet pile, per se. So I'm going to get my shop back. We're going to get all this cleaned out. And then um, I might even fire it up just to get it, make sure it's running good so I don't have to worry about it tomorrow. But uh, we're going to get all this stuff cleaned up, and uh, we're going to go from there. 
Alright, so guys, like I said, I got a little pile going here. So, I'm not going to get rid of all these pellets. I'm just going to save them. I'm doing so by just picking them up, trying to them into a bag. guys we got it all vacuumed out now as you guys can see that's what the inside of the silverback looks like a year and a half later oh year and four months later now i don't know about other people how much they use their their silverback their pellet grow or not but um for the last year ever since we moved um minus a few months in between where we had to get settled in and everything. We didn't do a whole lot of cooking. We did a whole a lot of in cooking and being with family and whatnot. But we cook pretty much once a week on this guy. And um, I mean, it's been holding up pretty darn good. I mean, look at that fire pot. Right? Let me see if I can get the flash on. There we go. Look at that fire pot. It looks like it's a little worn, but it's not showing any signs of decay or cracking or flaking or anything this is all stainless steel a lot of these pieces in here a lot of the silver what you see is definitely stainless steel. i don't i can't remember what the i think the other pieces are just black painted something i don't remember but in any event that's what it looks like in here guys that's what she looks like so i'm not gonna harp on it too long this is what the silver bag looks like a year and a half um, later. Um, like I said, we're going to do I got a couple cooks coming up that I'm going to post. I uh, know I haven't been doing a whole lot of posting. Um, I'm going to get back on that. Um, but we're going to go from there, guys. And so, hope you guys enjoyed this. Just a little, a little quick look at the silver back. A year and four months in. And I hope you guys enjoyed this. You know, I said, there's a whole, not a whole lot going on. Not a whole lot of information to put at you. But... Just something to talk about, share my little one-year update with you. Um, till the next video, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm out. Peace. All right, so guys, real quick. Um, today's the very next day. Um, continuing on with that, just that one-year update video. We're going to roll this into something else as well. Um, as you can see here on the ground, I've taken off the old smokestack, the original smokestack. Um, not because it was uh, broken or anything, but <clears throat> essentially this um smokestack cap somehow came off and um i should have let you guys see it but there's a bar literally right here that runs across the top i'll take you let you see the old one this is the old one that i just took off there was a bar that ran across the very top of this that allowed the smokestack cap to screw into it those who have the silver bag know exactly what i'm talking about <clears throat> and so um Somehow that came off, which this then disallowed the smokestack cap to um, stay completely on. Every time I put the cover on, that smokestack cap would come out, and I just got tired of dealing with it. So I just took it off completely and just had pretty much an open, uh, an open um, smokestack um, for smoke just to leave out, which didn't cause any issues to me that I thought. Uh, maybe it did something different that i don't know about to the engineering that would be a question for gorilla grills but i like to, i'm not too concerned about that because it didn't affect anything that i could notice um with that being said um we're going to fire this up i'm going to let you guys see that video um essentially give it give it what i consider a cold start um today it is 18 so degrees now outside that i got that um the smoke stack replaced or the smoke stack cap replaced we're going to give it a cold start um what is the cold start to me today it is 18 degrees outside here in the midwest where i am 18 degrees, 1.8. It's pretty chilly out. Um, not that it's cold as it getting the cold start, but any time that I fire up a grill and I throw food on, 
uh, before the grill is actually turned on is what I consider cold start. All that beginning smoke gets to get on the meat and that's what I consider cold start. But I'm not actually gonna put the meat on. I just did, um, as you guys saw, I just cleaned it out and vacuumed out all the ash and everything and put a fresh uh, foil pan down. I got the grill grate 100% clean. I took it out actually and took it inside. I took the, uh, the secondary upper rack and I took that inside and cleaned it. I was planning on using it because I'm about to do some bacon and some pork belly. I don't know, we're going through a pork thing right now. We're just really love with pork. But we're gonna do some pork belly and some bacon. So I was planning on doing, I'm using an upper rack, but I probably won't just because I don't like having to deal with the upper rack sometime. But anyway, I'm gonna give it a cold start. I'm gonna let you see what it looks like firing up a year and a half later. It still should run the exact same. Um, I have some pecan pellets in there. I'm probably gonna switch that out for some maple because I'm doing maple bacon. Um, and then after that, um, Unless guys have already seen it, I'm gonna make a little, a short little video on how to fire up a, a little 12 inch tube smoker. And after that, I'm gonna throw this bacon on and get it going. So, that being said, enjoy this cold start. Mm -hmm. 